really don't want to think about Madonka Donks while I'm having my pancakes. You know what I'm saying? Really? Yeah. Why would they change their name? Why exactly? It. It's been IHOP because the marketing people what, are why? usually morons and people turn their companies Everybody over to marketing idiots. Everybody in America knows what IHOP. IHOP is. The marketing people, Tony, bring your playbook in. Crazy. We're going to let you go. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, the Warriors are a win away from the title. LeBron is a loss away from free agency. And Julian Edelman faces a PED suspension. But we begin today with a decision on the future of Brian Colangelo in Philadelphia. He doesn't have any. Colangelo is now the former GM of the 76ers as a result of this mysterious Twitter scandal that a law firm hired by the 76ers concluded was tied to Colangelo's wife. The investigation also determined that Colangelo was the source of the information. So Colangelo and the Sixers have parted by mutual agreement. Wilbon, what does this mean for the 76ers? Well, Tony, immediately it means they sort of change over, and Brett Brown has more responsibility. It's coach, but it's also interim, let's say, boss of. Who cares what the title is? It's boss of. And Monty Williams, a name very familiar to a lot of people, uh, as a longtime coach in the NBA, as someone who had personal tragedy in his life, and I'm glad to see him having this opportunity, will be the, apparently the lead assistant, and together they will apparently will make the appeal to things like agents when it comes to free agency and running the team on a day-to-day -day situation that's immediately what we're talking about i don't know that there will be fallout yeah. from colangelo and anybody will hold it against the 76ers I, I don't think so but i don't know that what do you think well i think he had to go i think he can yeah. cling to the narrow ledge that says he did not himself do this but everything points to the fact that the information that got out there got out because of him and so that becomes a terrible trust issue you have, on that team, one of the biggest stars who you love is Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid cannot stop talking. If Joel Embiid felt that he could not trust the GM of his club, he would tell the other players in the league, don't come here, because this is not a good situation. So I think the Sixers had to do this. I don't think it's going to have that much effect in, in the near term, but we think of the Colangelos pretty close to, if not the first family of basketball. And, yeah. I, and I think this has tremendous ramifications for Brian Colangelo. I mean, I... I, I don't know yeah. where he Tony, goes I don't from know here. That he's unemployable, but I feel bad I for know. Jerry. I feel for Jerry. I feel bad for his dad. Who, well, let's face it, Tony, could be. I mean, if you rank the important people in the way history of professional basketball way in America, way up there, way up, yes. at the top of the list. Yeah. I don't think it attaches itself in any way to Jerry. That's my bias. I love Jerry Colangelo. But I think the Sixers will be fine, and there'll be some more tweeting from Joel and B. I think they, I think they get past this. I think they, I think I they did too. the right thing and the thing they had to do. I think they yeah. did. A franchise that used to belong to Philly, you millennials don't even know the Warriors used to play in Philly, do you? Is one win away from its third championship in four years on a sweep of Cleveland after saddling up Kevin Durant and riding his 43 points to victory here in Game 3. Durant's performance topped another LeBron James triple-double and came on a night when J.R. Smith and Rodney Hood, get this, outscored Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. Tony, does anything about this seem too easy to you? Not to me, because I was one of those people who thought it would go at most five and I thought it could go four. Let's go back over what you said. They get a triple-double, they get 33 from LeBron. They get something from J.R. Smith. They get something from Rodney Hood, who hadn't done Kevin anything Love. before this. They get 20 from Kevin Love, and the yeah. two best shooters on the other team go 7 for 27, and they still lose, and they still lose at home. This series, and Draymond Green's in foul trouble, and Andre Iguodala right. had to That's go right. back out to the right. locker. I mean, unbelievable. Right. So this series, to me, was over with J.R. Smith in Game 1. It, it is not a competitive series, regardless of the scores. From that point, it's not competitive. I think it's bad for the NBA because I think people look at it and they go, what happened here? It's LeBron against, you know, 87 guys. So, but, I, you know, I, I expected this. Did you not expect it? I, no, I expected a five-game series. I, I, I would disagree with you only on this one point. Cleveland should have won game one. Yeah. They were in control of game one. Well, they could have. And last night they had every chance to win game three. So if Durant, they right Durant there got him. Two Durant of the three, Durant what do you mean it's not dagger. competitive? Because Durant got him. Because Durant is unguardable. And by the way, Cleveland guards Durant nobody. Durant is unguardable. And, but Cleveland guards nobody. Everybody else has open shots. I mean, well, it, the open shots. Steph Curry was three for 16 and, and, and Clay Thompson had no game. What are you that's, talking about? That's exactly right. The shots are open all the time. They fell in they game two. They're going to fall in next year. Look. This is, to me, 
Everybody predicted at the beginning of the year that these two teams were going to reach the final. I don't think they knew the cast that Cleveland would have, but they knew that they would have LeBron. So you've had, this is the fourth time. The Godfather stopped at three because the Godfather three was terrible. They wouldn't make a Godfather four. This series is Godfather four. I mean, people, it's not a series. As much as I love to watch these teams, I think people have said, okay, enough already. Well, enough. Get new blood I, in this I thing. I had said earlier than that, I didn't need to see it to say enough of this. I don't know who, I don't want to throw anybody out. They earned their they trip did. here. Yeah. But, Tony, Cleveland, I, I disagree with you completely. Cleveland played, played a pretty darn good game. But here's the disparity in talent and the, and the gang up on LeBron James that ensues and will ensue tomorrow. How about tomorrow? Do we think that Klay Thompson and Steph Curry won't shoot? They're not and going Draymond seven Green for 27. And the Iguodala won't no. be better? Yes, like, like they're you better. can't have they're better. all those things. And yet Cleveland, Cleveland should be down no more than 2-1 in this series and could be up 2-1. You're giving them a game one when... when it they was had tied. It, they got hosed. They got hosed. I don't hosed. think they got hosed at all. They did get We're hosed. about to enter into the only real interesting part of the basketball season, the offseason. Or as I like to call it, where is LeBron going? Social media is already super saturated with everybody and his brother weighing in. And so many of them have LeBron going to the Lakers. Well, on yesterday, you said you believe LeBron is staying in Cleveland. When are you going to come over to my side of the street that LeBron is going to go to the Lakers? I'm not coming over to your side because I know you don't have any idea because I, I, I think that LeBron has no idea. Unlike Miami and coming back to Cleveland, those you could see coming in that LeBron knew he wanted to go somewhere like college for four years and try to win. And so he and his buddy, he and his dear friend Dwayne Wade hooked up and they got that done. Coming back to Cleveland, fairly predictable. You can understand this thing sure. and come back home, sure. do this thing that nobody had done in 50 plus nearly 60 years. Good for him. Did that. Yep. But there's no place like that now that seems automatic or perfectly suited to LeBron. I think this is going to take a lot of thinking. He's going to decide, what do I want now? What is it I want going forward? And those answers are different than 2010 and 2015. So I want you to stay with me for a while on this, and I'm going to explain to you why the Lakers is a perfect landing spot. Because it's LeBron's way of exacting revenge. We know that LeBron hates LeVar Ball, and he hates LeVar Ball because LeVar Ball intimated that LeBron being so wealthy and being such a great player that his children had no chance of being in the NBA. Remember that? When he yeah. said, shut up about this stuff. I try I, to forget anything LeVar Ball said. Get this out of my mouth. So, okay. Interesting you remember. So you go to Cleveland and you say, I'm gone, but you can sign and trade me to the Lakers. And you can bring Lonzo Ball over, because I don't want to play with Lonzo Ball, because he's got the That's ball in his hand all the time. Totally wrong. He so, loves Lonzo Ball. Okay. But Doesn't hear me out, father, because but he loves it's Lonzo revenge, ball. because then LeVar Ball from L.A. has to get connecting flights, either in Milwaukee or Kansas City or Cincinnati, just to see his kid play in Cleveland. And that, uh, that is LeBron saying, I win. Let's go back to a realistic scenario. <laughs> the people, the players that he would be running with in L.A., Tony, right now, I believe, you know, in Ingram and Ingram's Kuzma good. and Randall. Kuzma's good. Tony, they're better than Cleveland's roster now. And he brings so Paul George. Just, well, why would LeBron go there? He can't get, yes, he can. He can challenge Golden State. He's yes, got a better chance of challenging with the Lakers, I, so I'm not down on that. I'm just saying this depends on what LeBron wants to do Can with his I life Can I ask you right one now. other question? Sure. Is it possible that Chris Paul could join him on the Lakers to get well, out Tony, of it? Right? That's interesting. Listen, right? not only that, how, okay, how about Kevin Durant? If you want, I know Kevin Durant last night when asked about this, said my plan is to be with the Warriors, and I believe Kevin Durant. I do. But you want to get real cynical about this. You want to take this out and read some tea leaves. He's free to do what he wants. I'm just, I'm just asking you. Sounds a lot like the Lakers to me. Sounds like the Lakers. Somebody's going to wind up taking that Laker money, and they're going to be good again. Julian Edelman will reportedly be suspended for the first four games of the upcoming season for violating the NFL's PED policy. And even though the Patriots reached the Super Bowl last season without him, they were likely counting on him to bounce back from last summer's ACL tear because they've already gotten rid of Brandon Cooks and Danny Amendola. Tone, how much do the Patriots figure to miss a guy as reliable as Edelman has been for Mr. TB12? Yeah, well, I mean, they're, they're certainly thin at wide receiver, though most of the stuff would go to Gronkowski. I mean, he's the dominant receiver on the team. Look, four games is not a lot. Tom Brady missed four, and they won the Super Bowl. 
You know, now the first three of these games, I believe, are against teams that have either been in the playoffs last year or the year before. I, I think you can overcome that. And as you say, they overcame the loss of Edelman for the entire year and got to the Super Bowl. So I don't think either you or I are going to look at this and say, oh, oh this is terrible. Yeah. This is doomed. But the intrigue here is the trainer. Uh, I believe his name is Alex Guerrero, who is Tom Brady's trainer and Rob Gronkowski's trainer now. And now he's working with, with Julian Edelman. And the Patriots, as you know, are trying to distance themselves from this particular fellow to begin with. It's going to be rampant speculation about that, don't you think? Well, I guess. I mean, it's, it's rampant speculation that those guys weren't going to, that Brady and Gronk weren't going to go to OTAs, too. And now people look stupid for spending weeks at a time fretting over whether they were going to go to the stupid mini camp because they're there. So I, I don't care about the crazy speculation most oh, of it surrounding it's gonna be the Patriots. The Twitter verse is going to be on fire. But Tony, yeah, I, yeah, well, come on. You don't even know how to get on and log on that. So I don't you're subscribe not to the Facebook. And nor am you. I, despite having some Twitter followers. So let me just say this. If people are going to speculate, I know where you're going with this. Oh, well, does Guerrero have anything to do with steroids? Doesn't Tom yeah. Brady get tested? Doesn't Gronk get yes, tested? I'm, it's never linked to them. But you this don't, is an old guy at 32 years old who's coming off an injury and needed to feel I get better. That. And probably like Robbie Cano said, you know get what? It. I'll take the penalty if I can get myself I'm just saying again. that there are so many Patriot haters out there that you're going to yeah. see an avalanche of that particular speculation. There's an avalanche or they're going to miss minicamp too. Where, where were they again yesterday? Tell me one you more You know, time. there's avalanches and there's avalanches. Let's I take know. a break. Coming up, my cats can win the Stanley Cup tonight. We're going to be joined by the great Doc Emmerich. Funny how quickly you dumped Vegas after a season of slurping them. Later, could Andrew Luck be on the verge of finally throwing a football? Not a Nerf ball, a football. A real football? I, apparently like that's an what actual football? His father yes. throws it longer than he does it. Pardon the interruption is brought to you by Sicario. Day of the Soldado. Only on the big screen June 29th. Wait it off. Mighty small. The Washington Capitals can win the Stanley Cup tonight. And we are pleased to be joined by the man who will be calling the action for NBC. Doc Emmerich. And Doc, I ask this question as somebody who's lived in Washington for almost 40 years and watched this team and watched what has happened in series with this team. Given the team's history of choking in the past, but history, how much pressure on the Capitals tonight to end this thing right now? I don't think comparative to the past that there's that much pressure on them tonight, but I think they want to do it, and I think that they've shown that they've certainly got the size and the ability and the confidence to do it here tonight. If not then, then maybe back in a game six. But it's a different Capitals team than you've ever seen before because they have a strength and a confidence that I haven't seen in watching a Capitals team of the past, and I don't think you have either, Tony. Well, I'm going to ask you a question about... The other team, since Tony's so not interested in them, Doc, <laughs> and that's about Mark andre Fleury. He was so terrific through the first three rounds of the playoffs. Why has he struggled so much in the final? He hasn't had much help, Michael. I think that's it. Now, oftentimes we say that about goaltenders that have yielded goals, but if you'll recall some of the scrambles around the net, he might have made two, three saves and had to react to five different shots before eventually some went in. So the team play around him tonight has to be much better, and I think it will be. I think Mark andre will have his best game of the final tonight, and I think the team around him will too. Whether they'll win or not is another matter, but this will be a different Vegas team tonight, and I think it'll be much more solid than it was in Washington. I will uh -oh, get... Tony's getting worried. Well, yeah, He's hearing you talk about Vegas being more solid. He's starting to panic. Because because I'll add parenthetically that the last ghost they have to go through, the Capitals, is Flurry, who has knocked them out a number of times before, albeit with Pittsburgh, but he's knocked them out. In, in regard to the Golden Knights, they've hit the post seven times, Doc, in the past two games. Do they need to change anything fundamentally, or do they just have to hope for better luck? No, better luck is the thing. And the hockey gods have flowing robes and stitched faces and missing teeth, and they tend to even things out in a long series. And if this whole thing ends tonight, then the series didn't go long enough for them. But those things do tend to even out over the course of time. So those are the ones that might go in for them tonight. But might is the thing. We have no idea. In the uh, And by the way, OSHA says the decibel range that's safe is 85. It tends to be in the 90s here, and you just got a little glimpse of that a moment ago. Ah. 
we, we have to ask you about Alex Ovechkin. Uh, and speaking of hockey gods, I guess we're both really wondering, Doc, whether his reputation uh, or anything more substantive than reputation will change if he actually gets to win and then hoist the cup. Tell your story Barry Trotz told us about him. He went over to Russia to attend Alex's wedding. And a few days after, before Alex and his bride set off on their honeymoon, he had dinner with Alex and he reassured them, he reassured him, that your reputation and your place in history is not going to change whether you wind up winning more scoring titles or whether you have a Stanley Cup or not. But this was a different man at the start of the season. He had nine goals in the first five games. That's not terribly unusual for Alex Ovechkin, but the way that he played from the start of the year and the first time that I saw him in a game against Pittsburgh at the very beginning of the season, he seemed like a different guy, a fired-up guy constantly. We always saw that. We saw it more on the ice than we did at the bench, but we saw it all through the regular season and into these playoffs. A different firebrand kind of guy. I believe he was described in Sports Illustrated as a gray-haired howitzer. That's what we've seen, and I think that's what helped power and inspire his team past Pittsburgh and when they were down 0-2 to Columbus, and he said, we're coming back here tied at 2, and they were. And so if he does deliver, either tonight or in Game 6 or in Game 7, if his team delivers, I think he's going to wind up being the MVP despite other candidates just because of the leadership that he's brought. And well-deserved if that happens, I would say. We'll get you out of here on this. Win or lose. I mean, you're in Las Vegas. Th th this team just started, and they're in the Stanley Cup Finals. What sort of an impact has Vegas' success had on the future of the entire league? Well, it's been a wonderful story for all of sports, and it's actually transcended sports. Anybody that can start a business and 100 weeks later have this kind of success has done something wonderful. But I think, too, and you cannot separate it from that awful bit of history they had on October 1st, the fact that these players have become athletes but also great citizens of their community. That happened on the final night of their last preseason game. And they have not only been a part of first responders' families, victims' families, all year long, not just in early October. Donated blood, done all the wonderful things, but they've delivered on the ice and been a part of this community that will be inseparable for the people, the citizens here, uh, the rest of the lifespan of this franchise. And the word since is going to be out of the lexicon when you refer to the Vegas Golden Knights, except when you compare other franchises that come along to them. It will be so-and-so ha has come along and done this, and they are the first team to do it since the Vegas Golden Knights did it in 2018. Thanks so much for being with us, Doc. Doc thank, thank you so you. much. Much appreciated. Yeah, it's a, a lot of fun. Go Cats, Michael, and go <laughs> Colonials, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> NBC's coverage of Game 5 begins at 8 p.m. Eastern tonight. Let's take one last break. Still to come, why won't Terrell Owens attend his own Hall of Fame induction ceremony? Yeah. Because he's T.O., come on. Yeah, get out. And is DeAndre Ayton overconfident when he says he knows he's going number one in the NBA draft? Tony, you see how I said go Caps, even though I'm a Blackhawks guy? We're not in it. I can, I can. So. Happy time, people. Happy 22nd birthday, Christian McCaffrey. Stanford running back. The eighth overall pick in the NFL draft, the number one pick by the Carolina Panthers. McCaffrey was chosen to take the pressure off the one-man offense of Cam Newton. He gained 1,086 yards from scrimmage, combining running and receiving. Tony, if McCaffrey stays healthy, North Turner's going to figure out how to push that number north of 1,500. He can really be an even more impactful player. Happy anniversary to the team formerly known as the Washington Bullets. On this day 40 years ago, the now Wizards won their only NBA championship beyond Wes Unseld, Elvin Hayes, and Bobby Dandridge. It would make for an even more memorable date in Washington history if the Capitals were able to win their first championship tonight. And then how long for the Bullets Wizards, Tony? Are we going to live long enough, you and me? They're not ready yet, Mike. Not yet. A melancholy okay. trails to Red Shandings, the great second baseman who played most of his 19 seasons with the St. Louis Cardinals, died yesterday at the age of 95. Shandings made 10 All-Star teams, later managed the Cardinals in their championship season in 1967. Shane Dinks was the oldest living player in the Hall of Fame. That distinction now goes to Whitey Ford, the greatest Yankee starter ever, who will be 90 in October. 
I lived in fear of those championship Cardinals team, Tony, with Lou Brock, Kurt Flood, Mike Shannon, Tim McCarver, Orlando Cepeda, and, of course, Bob Gibson. Great teams. Big finish quickly. Sloan Let's Stevens defeated Madison Keys in straight sets to advance to the French Open final. Will she win her second major? Don't know if she can beat Hallett, but it's just good to have her back. She hadn't played well all summer for a while. Terrell Owens announced today he will not attend the Pro Football Hall of Fame ceremony in Canton this summer. Your thoughts? I have no idea what he's thinking. Neither does he. After his pre-draft workout for Phoenix, DeAndre Ayton said, quote, I know I'm going number one. Do you like his confidence? Yeah, I like even more if he's playing with, on, with Booker, with Devin Booker, Tony. That would be an unbelievable lineup. Using that shot clock rounds at the Austrian Open were 40 minutes quicker than the normal round in the European Tour. I know you like that. Yeah, I believe I had that, too. That's good for golf. Get rid of slow play. Last one. Wow. Frank Reich said Andrew Luck is real close to throwing footballs. You're excited, aren't you? Labor Day, Tony. That's what I can get excited about pro football. Labor Day. Out of time. Trying to do better the next time. I'm Tony Kornheiser. And I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, Knuckleheads. You can get the podcast on the ESPN app or app podcast. My friend Eddie likes tenfold.